Hey guys, welcome back. So in this video, I want to make a little navigation bar so I can tell if a user is logged in or not. And kind of also click on buttons so I can add new, go to the sign up page, or log in if I want to. So let's create a component for this. So we got our components, and then nav bar. And of course, this is a React component. We're going to use the menu component from Semantic. And we're going to be using the browser history. That way we can navigate to different pages. Oops. And let's create our class. And let's export defaults navbar. And we're going to be using a constructor for this. And if you think about it, we would like to have two different views um, for a navigation bar. One when they're logged in and one where they're logged out. So let's create two different functions, logged in and logged out. And let's go ahead and bind them. out. So logged in, logged out. Now let's do our render first. So return. And now here we, what we'd like to do is first check if the user is logged in or not. So get the cur user is equal to this dot props dot user has dot has on property dot data okay so in our state right now either we'll have the user will be an empty object like that or the user will have an object it'll have data and all stuff like that it'll have a key and whatnot or token of a string or whatever um, and so what we want to do is check if the user is logged in. And so what we can do is this state is logged in or logged out. This is has user. They're logged in. So what we can do is we can check if data is present in the object. If it is, we know they're logged in. If they're not, that means they're not logged in. So we can just use it like that. So basically, um, we're not actually getting the user, so we could say... Um, is logged in. It would return true if it has the property, false otherwise. And we can actually have this above our return. So create our menu, close our menu, menu.item, add recipe. So no matter what, whether they're logged in or not, we would like to show them um, a link to add recipes. So recipes.add and we're just gonna display the text add recipe and then close that menu item. So what that's doing right here is if they click on this menu item, we're just pushing onto the browser history, the recipe slash add, which navigates them to the um, add recipe page. So next, what we want to do is we want to say is logged in. Um, and if that's true, show them the logged in um, menu item. If not, we'll show them the logged out menu item. So let's go ahead and call both those functions. And now let's go ahead and populate for each one. So if they're logged in, what we'd like to show them is basically their username and then a log out button. So menu.menu.add 
position. We're going to have this on the right side. And then we're going to close the menu. Menu. Dot menu. And we we actually need to do dot menu here as well. No, actually we don't because this is not inside of the menu. This is fine as menu. Menu dot menu is when you have a menu inside of a menu. Okay, so we're actually just fine, just like that. So then our first menu item in this one is going to be the user. So on click. Whenever they click on this, we want to navigate them to their like a profile page. But for now, we don't have a profile, so we'll just leave it with no on click right now. Um, and then let's close the item and then just put inside their username. So this.props.user.data.email. So in the props, we have the user saved and we have their email, so we can grab that. I, I, I believe the email is saved. Let's double check. If we go to inspect, react, and we go to recipe. list click on user data and yes we can grab the email that way so that will display the email of the user and then also we want to show them a logout button so menu item name log out and then when they click on this we want to actually log them out so this dot prop stop log out now that's a uh, function we're going to have to create in a second here. And we'll create an action and do uh, a saga for that and all that. Okay, so we're going to do similar format for our logged out, except we want to show them the login and the um, sign up page. So this will be sign up. And then when they click on it, we want to browser history push sign up. And then we want to just put sign up. And now we'll do the sign in, or not sign in, login. And then when they click, we'll do browser history push login. And then we'll put login here. Okay, so now let's add this action called logout. But before we do, let's actually um, go back to our main component and just add the nav bar real quickly. So we'll add it right there, nav bar, and let's pass in the props to that. So we're going to need our own component, import nav bar from, and we're in the same location. So, okay, now let's add that action. Now if we go to the bottom, it's going to be similar to this one, recent recipes. So log out say log out requested. Now it should compile okay and yes sure enough we do see the buttons but nothing will happen when we push a log out but we should be able to log in so let's test that. Test at test.com and test. Sure enough when I log in we get test at test.com so that's awesome. And we can even add a recipe if we want to, or we can log out, but log out doesn't work right now. So let's finish that function up. So after we do this, we'll t go into the saga. Copy those. We'll have a call logout and a logout saga. 
make sure to fork it. Logout Saga. And the Logout Saga is looking for logout requested. And when it logout is requested, we want to call call logout. And then for call logout, all we want to do is actually call logout. And we don't care about the response. And then once the user is logged out, um, we want to, I guess, navigate them to the home page. So this is fine. And then we can just say logout done. Uh, this is important because we want to uh, get rid of the user out of our state because they're logging out. So we'll add in our reducer this logout. And then right here, we want to just say logout. Get rid of those guys. So we'll add a logout. And now we actually have to add that. So let's go to our services and add the logout. We go down here, say export function logout. Now this is actually uh, very simple to do. All we're going to do is go ahead and go into the uh, app and call logout. It's that simple. So now, and we're also we can just return it. This will return garbage, but it doesn't really matter. And then the next thing we want to do is in the reducer. Once the user is logged out, we want to update everything. So check login. We also want to check for another case. Um, when logout is done, we want to make the user equal to an empty object. Okay, and now our logout should be working nicely. So we go to the home page, click login, test at test.com. All right, cool. And we are logged in. Click here, go back here, we log out, we're no longer there, and if we go to, oops, if we inspect and go look at our state, we should find the user is empty, and sure enough, user is empty, awesome. So you'll notice every time I refresh the page though, for my login, so if I do test at test.com, And let's say I refresh the page, it goes away. But I just logged in. I don't want to log in every time I come to this page. I want it to save it for me. So in the next video, I'll show you how to basically persist the login and authenticate the user if they've logged in recently.